introduction, I mentioned uh, the life of Riley. Yeah. And that was, I, I, I didn't know much about him before, but when it finished, I felt like I, I knew him. And then I started looking at other things that he did, like his appearances on Johnny Carson and things like that. Being a co-director for a film like that was like, first of all, when you're directing a film, what are your, what's your job as a, a co-director? Well, uh, I directed that with Barry Polterman, who I've known since 1991, 90. We have been uh, collaborators on and off for a very long time. And he edited uh, American Movie, which we all know, the Mark Borchardt and all that. Uh, and he also edited some a lot of things that are on Netflix right now and HBO, the upcoming uh, Paul Newman documentary, which was sold for a huge amount and will be premiering on HBO Max. He edited that. Ethan Hawke directed. Uh, I forgot your question. What does that entail? Well, it changes every day because Charles Nelson Riley, who I really came to love and enjoyed, uh, was mercurial. So on that particular project, we were just juggling, trying to keep up with Charles, trying to, if he had a bad day and our cameras were rolling and he's doing something on stage, we had to just go with the flow. Barry put that whole thing together uh, over a year and it was a mountain of editing. So I, I think he did a ton of the work. I added uh, animated bits and music things later. Anything we could to punch up the scenes. It ended up being, for a long time, it was the highest rated critical theatrically released film of 2006 or seven. I forgot which. And it held that. Uh, its Wikipedia page is really amazing. I don't know who does those things, but uh, I was even, I was surprised. Oh, look at that. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, I think you mentioned all the editing that went into it. You can kind of tell sometimes that the, the shots will switch and there will be a subtle dis difference, but it's Correct. edited together so well that yeah, unless you're looking for it, you don't notice it. Right. He's great. He's great. He's uh, uh, deservedly working on a projects right now and that was one of I mean, that was charles last performance oh public was, performance I, right so public performance i was holding i was also a cameraman i was also holding uh the camera when he charles spent his whole life on the stage and i was holding the camera when he stepped off the stage for so the very last what time did he say life. to you because he says something or he oh, says something yeah, i did notice that but i couldn't couldn't make out what he was saying he said, thank you, God bless you. Then he held me and he said, thank you for smiling. Yeah, and it was so touching because I knew and he knew that was, that was it. It was over. And it was really something. Uh, we followed him downstairs and he made Manhattans for all of us. And that was thrilling, I thought. Uh, the film needed him to be alive. He, he died shortly after. Uh, there, there were a lot of bookings uh, to the Tonight Show. Couldn't wait for Charles to return and supposedly make his 100th appearance. Uh, we had a lot of... Uh, and his death really hit the PR department hard and it affected the film. I mean, no one wants us to see two directors plugging a film. I mean, that, that's, that's moronic. Uh, they want to see the star. 